Well, I'm based in Toronto, even though my heart may be in Alberta. So the information I get about Alberta is often through the filter of the internet. One of the things I've detected by going through dozens of tweets about this Ethics Commission report and Danielle Smith is that the media party, the regime media, the legacy media, the bailout media, whatever you want to call it, have universally ignored the fact that the CBC's central allegation against Danielle Smith, that she or her office meddled with prosecutors, communicated with prosecutors, was absolutely devastated by this report. The judge, Marguerite Trussler, who's now the ethics commissioner, she's a former judge, said 44 out of 44 prosecutors who touched COVID files said, no, they didn't receive a single email about it. And everyone in the premier's office testified they didn't send an email, which seems to make sense since none were received. And yet the CBC is still publishing that such email, a series of emails were sent to prosecutors, plural, yet not one can be found. I find that incredible, an incredible lie to begin with. But even more so that this former judge, Marguerite Trussler, now the ethics commissioner, ruled, said, I have can find no evidence of this. And yet even noting that, which was half the complaint here, is completely absence in the regime media. It's almost like they're in a club together. In fact, this stunning website story by CTV actually has a headline, email was found or email exists. Even though the, the ethics commissioner said there were no emails, just absolutely incredible. So that's what it looks like through the filter of the internet from here in Toronto, a couple thousand kilometers away. But who is a man on the ground, finger on a pulse, who is living and breathing Alberta politics every day, who's about as Albertan as they get. I'm talking about my friend Derek Fildebrandt, the boss of Western Standard. Hey, Derek, nice to see you. Always good to be back. Thank you. Well, thanks for having us. And how, by the way, how are the wildfires? Uh, I mean, the smoke I know is an inconvenience, but how are the fires themselves? Are there still people who are in danger? Yeah, it's still raging, still nasty. Uh, I mean, most of my interaction with it is just... Smoke around Calgary. It's a lot, it's a lot clearer today than it was the last few days. Uh, I put I had a uh, couple two days ago. It looked like the red planet it looked like Mars around here. And, but I, I've I've talked to some folks who are up there. I talked to one uh, MLA who's running for re-election uh, up in the north uh, west corner, and uh, he has essentially not campaigned the entire election. He's just been kind of coordinating efforts on the grounds there. Uh, it's it's still pretty chaotic, but it, it it seems to be a little less extreme than the 2016 ones that saw Fort McMurray uh, get singed pretty bad. Yeah, I can imagine uh, what an I mean, not just an inconvenience, but it when there's that real emergency on the ground, even a politician has to, especially if they're an incumbent MLA, has to be part of the solution, not just uh, indulging in the campaign. Do you think that's going to affect the? the election timing at all? I mean, I, it's one thing to be an inconvenience or even a blight in the sky, but do, what do you think? There, do you think there will be some parts of the province where voting is delayed at all? I want to get back to the ethics question, but I, but well, I am curious yeah, what yeah. you think. Just, just quickly, uh, I don't think it'll be a material difference. Mm -hmm. uh, most, of the, most of those are big, sprawling rural ridings that for the most part are safe UCP. The only one... Uh, in the north that's in play in any way would be uh, Lesser Slave Lake. And uh, it's a very low population riding. It's under a special formula. So even a few hundred people not able to vote actually could switch things there. But uh, I, I don't think it's going to be a material, make a material difference to the ability of people to get out and vote in a way that will actually change the outcome of any seats. Yeah, I think you're right. And and doing something as dramatic as changing an election, I think, erodes confidence. People, And by the way, yeah. it's a license to move elections around for any uh, so-called emergency. All right, let's get back to the news of the day. Um, look, uh, there's no um, getting around it. The ethics commissioner did say that Danielle Smith broke the rules. She had no punishment, no sanction, no advice even on how to fix it. But she did say that. I got a question for you. Is this what they call in campaigning a late hit as in something so close to the election, so dramatic, like a surprise by someone who could have waited a couple of weeks, but said, no, 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 I want this to come out before the election. I want this to come out on election day. I'm going to I'm going to meddle in the election. I'm going to drop a bombshell right on debate day, 11 days to the vote. Is that unfair on my part or was this a late hit in the campaign? Well, it is a late hit. Uh, was it intentional? Mm. 
I mean, it's certainly weird. I've never seen federally or provincially an ethics commissioner release a negative report during a campaign period. I've just never seen that before. Uh, so it definitely leaves open the possibility. But it, it, at a minimum, the ethics commissioner is sensitive to the allegation of it because in it she recommended that the legislature uh, consider amending the laws around the Conflict of Interest Act so that the, uh, the ethics commissioner could put investigations on hold during a writ period. Because it's obviously a very hyper political time. But these are always political things, but this is a very political time. So at the very least, the ethics commissioner is aware of the perception that this is uh, very politically timed. That doesn't necessarily mean that it was done intentionally, but it, it, it is extremely strange. But I, I, to be fair, though, I mean, if this had dropped a week after the election, the NDP and the media would allege that the ethics commissioner was covering up for the UCP and for uh, Premier Smith. So there's probably no good way to time this kind of thing one way or another. Now, there are two main complaints. The first was those CBC emails, which the judge, if you read the, the report, exhaustively looked into, um, talked to multiple people. And the judge, I, I say the judge, she was a former judge, now the ethics commissioner. She said yeah. that the prosecutors were adamant it didn't happen, and they were even angry with the allegation. Like these prosecutors, 44 prosecutors, not only every single one of them denied it, but they were sort of hurt that someone would smear them saying that they that they were somehow uh, being directed mm -hmm. poli politically. So all 44 prosecutors said no. All I think it was 32 staff in the premier's office said no. The judge here says there is no evidence at all. To me, that's a calamitous rebuke of the CBC's reporting. And yet the CBC is still reporting that. Still reporting the existence yeah. of emails that the judge can't find and 44 prosecutors can't find. So I've never seen anything so brazen in my life. So it's a good news, bad news story uh, because Smith did get her hand sl slapped on a bit. And I know you're going to want to touch on that in a bit. But uh, on this, this was the good news side. Uh, Smith has maintained she has not, her and people in her office, to her knowledge, have not been in any contact with prosecutors. And if, and if someone had or if Smith had, that would be bad. That, you know, that would be uh, definitely warranting of significant censure. It'd be very inappropriate. But the the report was, was clear here. Uh, and the CBC has not changed their story uh, that we've seen, at least. They haven't updated the story or retracted it and apologized. Uh, all of the media that I've at least seen from uh, the legacy media in Alberta uh, have, at the very least in the story, not... If, if not really talked about that part, generally not put it up front. It's, mm -hmm. it's been all about uh, the negative side. And I mean, I, I, I guess that is the news business. Uh, we're, we're all guilty of, you know, if it leads, it bleeds. If it's negative, it tends to be more newsworthy. It's, it's, it's never a news story that uh, nothing happened today. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's definitely been downplayed in the press that, uh, that she's been, it, it seems, entirely exonerated of the more serious allegation against her. Um, and the CBC is uh, not only not playing up that in, in the reports on on the uh, the report that came out today, but ha hasn't uh, hasn't retracted its existing story. So definitely would seem to strengthen the legal case if Smith decides to pursue her defamation suit against the CBC post election. You know, it's one thing for them not to retract; like they can say we stand by it. But they don't even acknowledge that the judge tore a strip off them and said it's fake. Like you can yeah. say the judge ruled against the CBC email allegation and said they had no evidence. CBC stands by its reporting. So, OK, yeah. so you're saying you disagree. Now we have to choose between the judge's version, and the CBC's version. But at least we have the news that the judge was against. And it the is possible that the CBC is correct. I don't think it is at this point. I think the the scales have been pretty heavily tilted one way to show that it's not likely a correct story, but it is possible it's true and they have a right to stand by it. But they do have an obligation to at least acknowledge that uh, that, that, that this has been uh, the result of the report, that, that this uh, former judge and the ethics commissioner says, no, didn't happen, fake news. That was an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. I'm Ezra Levant. Every weekday, I do a monologue about the topic of the day. Then I interview a fascinating guest, either in studio or via Skype. 
And then I read your mail, whether it's fan mail or hate mail, which is sometimes even more interesting. This is on our premium service, though, called Rebel News Plus. Go to rebelnewsplus.com. It's eight bucks a month or less if you buy a whole year in advance. You get my show every weeknight, plus Sheila Gunn Reed's show every week. It's called The Gun Show. It's pretty amazing. You know, we rely on you because we do not take a dime from the government. In Canada, that makes us almost unique. So please help us out and help yourself to some great journalism at rebelnewsplus.com.